On second down, here's Goff. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. That catch good for only a yard, and it'll be third down. Brandon, perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion they would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing, communicating. There he is, and they passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. And this opening drive not going to plan. This is now third and 13. Just beating the play clock is gone. A quick throw here. That's complete. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. The completion good for only six, and that'll bring up fourth. So on fourth down, here's Johnny Hecker to put it away. Travis Benjamin deep for the Chargers. This will be taken at the 10. A big boot that time, 57 yards the official distance. And the Chargers will be backed up deep to begin their drive as they take over first and 10. So Rivers will lead the Chargers up first and 10 at their own 14-yard line. And now a first carry for Melvin Gordon. And that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. They'll wind up losing three yards here. And that'll make this a second and 13. Now they'll pitch it out. This is Gordon. And some room to roam now. And he'll get this up to the 30-yard line. 18 big yards on that one and a charger first. And there we see an early burst that makes him one of the leading rushers in the league. Well, I want you to know, I listened to you yesterday when we were watching film. You said write down the word vision for him. It was on display there, wasn't it? It certainly was because he allows the blocks to set up in front of him. And if that continues, it could be a long afternoon for those guys trying to play some defense. So following the run by Gordon, okay. here's first and 10. First down, Rivers. Going underneath for Gordon. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. It's an eight-yard pickup, and it'll be second down. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They've become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. The tackle there by Mark Barron. Another scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. And what that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. Rivers on third and two. This is Gordon on the dump off. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. A 10-yard pickup, and it's enough for a Charger first down. I'm not sure that this play was designed for him specifically, but they got through the progressions and got the ball to him. So second catch on the drive. He may not be a primary guy, but they definitely want him involved, don't they? Uh, absolutely. This early, the opening drive, as you said, two catches. So if they can get him going in the passing game, that should open up his running game, too. Rivers now to throw on first down. He goes full extension, and he's got it. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time, and another first down. And now the Rams are going to halt things as they want a timeout. They'll have two remaining as we step aside here in this first quarter. Oh, 
A couple of first downs have him to the 40 now on first and 10. Back to the ground now with Gordon. And little room to maneuver there. He gets it down to about the 39. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, this big defensive lineman will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. Back to back.
Quick one yard runs here, so that leaves him with a third down and eight. So that'll back him up five. After the delay, they're backed up even further for third and long. to throw Rivers he's going to look for Allen now on the deep ball so they took a shot there on third down couldn't get it now it's four well that certainly looked like something that they discussed all week in practice getting ready for this one take the big shot right out of the gate at worst you'll open up the defense a little bit loosen them up have them back on their heels Rivers is going to stay out there. They're going to try for this thing on fourth down. And the Rams are going to go ahead and take another timeout. That's their second, so they'll have one remaining here in this second quarter. We'll be right back. Now on fourth down, we've got a whistle here and a timeout. They'll have two remaining as we step aside here in this second quarter. Looks like the offense is going to take another shot here. They're going on fourth and 13. Here's Rivers. He's going to fire one deep over the middle. And this is hauled in by Williams for a charger touchdown. Tyrell Williams, 43 yards. And the Chargers are able to strike for six. Point after, right down the middle. And it's now a 7-0 game. is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. Fielded about a yard deep. And all that work, but he 
he stopped where he ultimately would have been and he simply taken a knee and that's the 25 yard line time for the Rams to get the ball again and earlier we were touching on their 4-0 start but the way that they've done it offensively so impressive they're now the 10th team just the 10th team in the Super Bowl era to start 4-0 while scoring 30 or more points in all their games so you're telling me the defensive coordinators around the NFL that have the Rams on their schedule there'll be no sleep yeah all right you watch out it. yeah because look what they did to Minnesota one of the best defensive teams in the league they averaged 10.1 yards per play had three receivers over 100 yards in the game Cooper Cup 162 yards and two touchdowns then you also had Brandon Cooks with seven catches for 116 yards and a touchdown and Robert Woods 101 yards and a touchdown who do you focus on who do you try and stop good luck Well, they had the run for no gain. Now they'll try again from the 25 on second and 10. To throw on second down is gone. Escaping the pressure right. And he'll maybe get back to the line of scrimmage, but no more than that. All in all, no gain on the play, and it'll bring up third. Well, there was pressure all around him, so the only play was to try and get out of there. I think it was an excellent effort by him just to get back to the line of scrimmage. Two runs for a net gain of nothing. Now here's third and ten. on third gone chargers able to get the pressure and bring him down we've watched this a long time and i still don't believe we get it third and long why are you calling play action because yeah, they're not going to bite defensively right no not at all i did have a coach explain to me years ago that for some teams that's how they have to deal with pass protection and their line blocking but to me it seems silly yeah well they're silly and it leads to a play action sack 62 yards on the punt that time wow and it'll be Charger football here as they take over. Here comes the Chargers offense now back out onto the field. We have to be thrilled with that first drive. They got him the touchdown. Now they'll be looking to make it a two-score advantage here on the road. And you know they spent all week in practice in meetings talking about taking an early advantage. Being the road team, going up a score, that takes the crowd out of the game and puts some doubt in the minds of their opponents. They'll start on the ground. This is Gordon on first down. And room to run as he's up past the 35-yard line. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down. That fits the bill. On second down, they'll run the Gordon. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. He lost four there, and it's third down. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. this all the way down inside the 35. That one will go down as 33 yards on the third down conversion. They'll run it now out of the gun. And a solid run down inside the 30. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still, 
Got to like the way they're moving the football, partner. Absolutely. Pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you'll take runs like that each and every time, won't you? Rivers now on second down. Buying time to his left. And he'll head out of bounds inside the 10. Mark him down at the 9. A good pick up there of 20 yards. On any given pass play, you never know exactly where your exit points are going to be. On this play, he was flushed to his left, still on the run, able to accurately throw the football for a nice first down. A first red zone opportunity here for the Chargers. They're looking at a first and goal from about the nine. Now Anthony Lynn, sensing the play clock running out, will call for a timeout as he'll get a chance to talk it over after picking up the first down. First and goal, Melvin Gordon. And they'll be driven back here, losing yardage to the 10-yard line. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Doubling this guy has to be a priority before moving up to the next level because the big fella, he just ate that one alive, just stuffed it. In fact, before the game, he was talking to us, and he's like, hey, these pants make me look fat? And we said, nah, man, you're just a whole lot of guy. He is at well over 300 pounds. He's a big man. Rivers. That is caught. It's Benjamin for the Charger touchdown. Travis Benjamin from 10 yards out. And the Chargers find a way to stretch their lead. Extra point splits the uprights. And it's now 14 to nothing. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. Fielded about a yard deep. but he stopped where he ultimately would have been, and he simply taken a knee, and that's the 25-yard line. Here's a Los Angeles offense as they get set to take possession. Already down two touchdowns here in the first half. This becomes a pretty important drive, doesn't it? It certainly does, and a lot of the teams script plays. We know that, right? They, they have a script to start the ball game, and typically those scripts go between 12 and 24, 25 plays. Down two touchdowns early, probably not very deep into their script, I think that they'll stay with it. I don't think they'll abandon it just yet and try and generate some offense on this drive. Anything. At least three points get that zero off the board. On first and ten, Goff. Going for the deep ball. And that one falls incomplete. Looked like he might have had position there, but he couldn't hold on it at second down. Nice play there to force the incompletion. And to me, one thing's for sure. When you're the underdogs and you're playing on the road, you absolutely have to get takeaways. You've got to get the ball from them. Yeah, win that turnover battle, going to be key. They didn't get one there, but you get the feeling they keep making plays like that. They might just get a few. Yeah, once you get one, defensive teams think they come in bunches. Here goes tonight. By 20. Check. 14. 14. 14. 14. Dula. Second and ten, golf again. He'll get this complete to Cooper Cup. He's got a convoy, and he might be gone. Touchdown, L.A. A big play there as the first half is winding down. And the Rams strike quickly here for six points. Zerline good with a PAT, and that'll make our score 14 to 7. This game back with it a touchdown now as the kickoff's away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And now running right through it. And this return nets positive as he gets past the 25 and up to the 27-yard line. 
Now the Chargers offensive unit ready to see what they can do here. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. Final 12 seconds of the half now as they've got it first and 10. They go play action here on first down. And that'll be incomplete with just six seconds left on the clock. He was trying to get that one to Allen that time. That'll bring up second down. Second and 10 now from the 27. Throwing again, Rivers on second and 10. Eluding the pressure right. Now he'll let it go. He's got a man complete. Yeah, he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. So two quarters down, two remain. Charles and I return after the break. So the Chargers will start the second half with the lead and the football as we're underway in the third quarter. Out comes the Chargers as they'll go on offense now to start this third quarter. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking for some separation here as we begin the third quarter. I like the way you term that because now I think they go a little bit deeper into their playbook. They like what they did in the first half. That worked okay. But in order to get the separation that you just talked about, change things up a little bit. Change your tendencies. Try and hit them a little bit more with some things they didn't see in the first half. We'll see if they do just that. Forced out to his left. Now a hit, and Rivers lost the football. And the Rams have got it back. When I see a play like that, I come back to risk reward. I don't know about you, but is it worth it at that point, whatever you're going to pick up, to either take the hit, and in this case, lose the football. So should have gone down. I mean, hindsight's always 20-20, but that's the safe play. You're exactly right. Hindsight's really never wrong, is it? Because you can analyze it, but I think ultimately you got to look at it as a first option, taking care of the ball, getting what you can, and that's it. Don't worry about it. And the Chargers rush is going to get there. Down he goes. Melvin Ingram in there to bring him down for a loss of seven. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football. Before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. Now following the sack, they'll look to make amends on a second down and 17. 11. 11. Hey, check, check. Three down. Goes to the line. Goff Watch 30. now to throw. He's letting it fly for Cooks. And it's intercepted at the goal line. Derwin James with a pick. And not much on the return there. He'll take it only up to the nine-yard line. Well, they didn't exactly show patience there, did they? Just down the score, they come out firing right away and compound things by throwing an interception. They put their defense in a really tough spot. They'll try and get the ground game going. Here's Gordon. And he'll find some room to get this up to about the 14. And it's the Pro Bowl corner, to keep Tlaib there to stop him. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. Second down, Rivers. Looking for Green, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Mikel Roby Coleman. And his guys are going to take over at the 21 yard line. Ah, oh, Brandon, this is a veteran quarterback back there. He should know better than to make a throw like this. This is definitely not his best ball. And I think he knew this was trouble the second it was leaving his hand. Time to establish the run game here. Gurley. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. 
Brandon, we're into the second half, and this offense has not scored a lot of points, and that was another example of why. I think it's time to open things up and start really trying to move the ball. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. Here's Goff now on second down. And he's going to go down. They sack him back right around the 30. Melvin Ingram in there to pick up his second sack now of the afternoon. So Goff, he'll try to refocus after the sack. The Rams now set up with a tough one, a third and long. He didn't even try to signal for a timeout, so they must have not been aware of the numbers. I think he lost track of the time left in the play clock and probably was trying to read the defense and trying to figure out which play to run and just lost track, and it cost him. After the delay, they're backed up even further for third and long. and his guys not coming off the field. They're going for this. Here we go on four. Golf. He's going to run, but he's got a long way to go. No luck for the Rams as they fail here on fourth down. And the Charger defense stands tall, and they get the football back. The Chargers getting set to go. We have not seen much on offense from either side these last few drives. It has been a struggle, hasn't it? Totally, and you're thinking to yourself right now, if you're on offense trying to get things figured out, okay, we self-scout every week in our game plan. How many things do we do at certain times? What are our tendencies? Time to go to some of those tendency breakers and try and create some offense. They always have those in their back pocket, don't they? You have to. And if you don't keep abreast of what you're doing, you lock into a rhythm and make it easy for the opposition. Looking for tendency breakers right now. A nice run there, nine yards, and it'll be second down. They go to him again. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. Only a gain of a yard, but that's all they needed as that's going to move the chains. In my book, that's running the ball well, but with intelligence. How about him keeping the clock moving, staying in bounds? Yeah, even though it's the third quarter, you're thinking ahead, aren't you? This is where your running game can really help you with a lead in the second half. I agree totally. It's not just end-of-the-half situations that you worry about the clock. It's throughout the game, and with a lead, stay in bounds. Make them fight harder to try and catch you. Delta! Hey, go orange. The first down throw here for Rivers. Dancing to his left, and he just gets rid of it. Throws it away. A wise move there. Looked like nobody open. Now second down. 
Well, the numbers have been good in the passing game and certainly a big reason why they have the lead. But now here, third quarter, maybe go to the run game a little more? Yeah, perhaps. I mean, after that incompletion, a little credit to the well, defense well, for well. shutting them down on that play. Maybe you try and run the football a little bit more in this spot. But they have to feel good about how they've been throwing it overall. Rivers with a turn and give this one to his running back, Gordon. And nowhere really to go there. He'll take this up just shy of midfield. Just a gain of a yard there, and now it'll be third down. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You force the incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? The Chargers on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. This is third and nine. That one's got four, four down. Wait! 12, 12, 12. Shoot, shoot, shoot. That ain't your orange ball for. Why not? Why not a little bit? Get it high. From the gun, Rivers. He's got it. It's Williams. He has a first down, and that catch will also put him over 100 yards receiving now on the afternoon. Big hook up there. Forced to throw it on third down. The connection's going to keep the drive alive and also keep the clock moving. Yeah, and from a defensive perspective, didn't get a sack, didn't knock the ball free, didn't break up the pass. The clock keeps running on you. You're in a dire situation now. And his throw's going to be incomplete. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. We've seen good cover skills on display throughout this game, really from both teams. And there's another nice example there of them making it difficult to complete a pass. On second down, Rivers again. He's airing it out for Williams. And he can't hang on. That's definitely going to be one he wishes he had back. Incomplete in the end zone. Even without a ton of pressure in his face, it just shows how difficult it is to pick apart his own defense. Those guys are sitting back, and they're not playing receivers as much as they're playing the eyes of the quarterback and when he delivers the ball. On third down, Rivers steps away to his left. Gets it to Benjamin. It's caught. A very solid gain of 27. Well, probably the only thing he did wrong there was go out of bounds, nursing this fourth quarter lead. You want to stay in, eat the clock. Yeah, you got to love the effort, the catch, the extra yardage, but you've got to know the situation. Stay in bounds, young man. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. Rivers on first down, flushed out right. That's going to be caught at the 10-yard line. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. The completion good for three, and it's second down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. And only about a yard there as he takes it from the nine to the eight. And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop him here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take. Puts a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down. Went his way. It worked out. Doesn't matter whether they've scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. So first and goal, six points here would go a long way toward wrapping this one up. They'll try and punch it in. Gordon. And no signal yet. I don't think he got in. He didn't. They'll mark him at the one. 
No gain on the play, and it's going to be second and goal. Rivers to throw this time. Under pressure now, and he's going to go down. Sack back around the eight. Mark Barron leading the surge there. He drops him for a loss of six. One of the bigger plays in the game thus far. The crowd getting into it as we come up on a big third down. Time for a break. We're back to see what happens after this. The Ram fans in this old stadium on their feet. Third and goal. Now it's the backup Smith. Now look at this. They get the turnover they needed. It's intercepted. Picked off by Mark Barron. And they'll have the football, but deep in their own territory as he's brought down at the five. right out of the gate we're gonna get a delay he didn't seem in a rush I guess they just didn't know where the play clock was I think you're right about that because there was no hurried movements there right no up tempo at all clock just ran out I think he was as surprised as maybe his bench was and now we won't see a play on first down we're gonna get a timeout instead it's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. A good pickup after the penalty, 12 yards, and it's second down. He'll look to throw. And that one got tipped, kind of threw everything off. It brings up third. This defense has watched their lead dwindle away. This is where they really need to bow up. They executed well there. And it's often hard after you've played really well early, and then you kind of relax a little bit. To step on the gas again. They just did it on the last play. Looks like they want to finish this one off. They'll try and pick up the first with Gurley. And they're going to get the first down here across the 15-yard line. Officially a gain of just a yard there, but they do convert on third and inches. They'll look to throw. And that's caught left side. It's Woods. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this across the 25-yard line. 12 yards there as they move the chains. Partner, they're clearly saving those timeouts, but they still have to work with some urgency to put themselves in the right position. Back to throw. And Cooks has it over the middle. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. Now before this second down play, we'll get whistles and a timeout as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds left to go in the game. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. to throw and he can't get a throw away he's taken down Denzel Perryman in there to take him down and the clock will roll 
This has been a tough one for this offensive line. It appears almost like they've been on roller skates this entire game, the way they've been pushed around. Six sacks given up in this one. across midfield and inside the 45. And a big third down conversion with a gain of 28. Goff now to throw. Out to his left. Now a desperation throw deep. Got a man, it's caught at the six yard line. And we will get a timeout with two ticks left. Tell the truth, partner. You didn't think he was coming down with that one, did you? Come on, tell me the truth. <laughs> no, I didn't. I'll tell you what, though. A one-handed grab of that length. Talk about giving your team a little juice. Oh, big time. I mean, everyone's going to be excited about that one, whether you're on the field or not. It permeates its way through the entire team, and I can't wait to see what they do on the next down. Now gone. And he's going to take this one in for a Rams touchdown. Brandon Cooks finding the end zone on the game's final play. And the Rams are an extra point away from tying up this football game. Zerline connects on the extra point, and we are tied at 14. It's a little teaching moment here. Overtime rules. Remind us how this goes, partner. Okay, so in the past, we had sudden death. First team to score wins, but no longer. Now, if the team receives the ball, scores a touchdown, they win the game. If they kick a field goal, though, or don't score, the other team gets a possession. And after both teams get a possession, then we're into sudden death. First team to score wins the game. And he's going to be out of bounds on the return. Not a great return. They'll start back around the 17. And the Rams getting set to go now. They control their own destiny here. They have the football in overtime. Obviously, a touchdown would win it. And I think teams around the league are still adjusting to the idea of going downfield, scoring a touchdown, wins the game because they were used to just going downfield and trying to get in field goal range to win a game. Still having to make that transition. Let's face it now. The ones who are doing it best know they need to go down, attack, put the ball in the end zone, and not leave it up to a field goal and give the other team a chance. Yeah, as we said, they control their own destiny now. Now a first down throw, gone. And he's going to be brought down. Back at his own six-yard line, Melvin Ingram. Who else? He's in there for his fourth sack of the afternoon. And the job becomes twice as difficult now. After the sack, it's second and 20. Pitch it back to Gurley. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. Desmond King making the tackle. And that's one of the reasons you like to blitz even on rundowns. It confuses the blocking assignments. It doesn't allow those offensive linemen to get up to the second level. The Rams on third down. Two for five to this point. This is third and 17. Throwing over time for goal. Going up top for Cup. Oh, so close but incomplete. Could have been a big turnover in overtime if he'd held on. Instead, though, it's fourth down. Here's Johnny Hacker now. On for a very important punt here in overtime. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. Now Benjamin. Well, he wasn't too far from breaking that. Officially, give him 15. And possession will switch. Hands first and 10. 
So out come the Chargers. Their defense did its job, got the stop. All they need is three, and this is over. Couldn't have done much else other than score themselves and end it. But they turned it back over to them, and now all they need is a field goal to win the game. An excellent job by the defense. Can the offense finish things off? Yeah, part one is done. Now part two. They'll start the drive with a run by Gordon. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 45-yard line. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. I know when I was a kid, I always got real excited when I saw those lateral-type runs. But the best backs that made it happen, go, they put a foot in the ground and just go. That didn't happen there. That play got swallowed up. A loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. Rivers. This is Gordon on the dump off. That one goes for 36 yards. Coaches love the rack run after catch, especially here in overtime. Took the short pass, turned it into a big play. And that's what coaches talk about when they talk to their teams about what overtime means. How many big plays have to be made in order to win a ball game, and which play will be the big play. And Henry's hit. He lost the football. But a Chargers player was able to fall on it, and they'll keep possession. A call it luck or skill, whatever the case is, they're feeling good about just keeping the football there. Yeah, the biggest thing that they're calling it now, our ball. <laughs> we don't care if it was luck. And this will be caught. It's a touchdown. An absolute stunned silence here as they have come in and stolen this one in overtime. A partner, a great game that we got to see and making it extra special. Not only did I get four quarters with you in this one, I got some overtime, a little whipped cream on top. Look at you, trying to make this whole thing palatable. I just want you to pay for my meal later. Hey, you really just wanted four quarters <laughs> what you wanted, but how much fun was that? We had that type of a game where we got us to overtime, and then we get the dramatic ending to finish things off as well. What a game. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gaughton. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. From Los Angeles, so long, everybody.